This is part one of a screencast covering the basic structure of the Milky Way. The phrase Milky Way and the word galaxy, they both date back to an ancient Greek root word called gala, which stands for milk. Okay, now when talking about the Milky Way, initially we're talking about the band of stars that you could see stretching across the sky at night, predominantly in the summer months, and also to a lesser extent in the winter months. The first systematic mapping of this band of stars after the invention of the telescope was conducted by the important English astronomer William Herschel in the 18th century. Through his mapping of the Milky Way, Herschel became convinced that the sun resides in the center of that band of stars, which was thought of as the entire universe at that time. This perception persisted until the early 20th century. Okay, in the early 20th century, we get to this man, an American astronomer named Harlow Shapley. Shapley used a specific type of variable star called a Cepheid variable to map out the distribution of globular clusters around the Milky Way. He finds that the globular clusters are spherically distributed around the Milky Way, and they're centered upon a region in the direction of the constellation of Sagittarius. Combining these results with stars' proper motion, that is the sideways motion of stars across the sky as seen from the Earth, Shapley determined the size and general shape of the Milky Way, including the Sun's position within. Here's a photograph of a typical globular cluster. This is the famous globular cluster M13, which is visible from the Northern Hemisphere predominantly in the summer months. It basically consists of a spherical distribution of upwards of around 100,000 stars or so in a region that is maybe only about 50 light years across. The Milky Way contains several dozens of these types of clusters. Okay, here is the basic map that Harlow Shapley arrived at when he mapped out the distribution of the globular clusters. On this map right here, we have the location of the sun and then we have this roughly spherical distribution here of globular clusters around the Milky Way. Shapley discovered that the center of that spherical distribution is like so, roughly in the direction of the constellation of Sagittarius, and the distance from the sun to the center of that distribution is about 30,000 light years. Shapley correctly interpreted his results as indicating that the center of the Milky Way lies in this direction. Okay, now moving forwards from there. This right here is a nice composite picture of the band of the Milky Way stretching across the sky. It's actually a 360 degree view. So this side of the photograph here is attached to this side of the photograph here. In order to take a photograph such as this, you would have to observe the band of the Milky Way over an entire year. Basically, you would see this portion of the Milky Way high in the sky in the summer months. And then you would see this portion here and this portion here high in the sky in the winter months. The center of the distribution is in this direction like so. Looking in this direction, you're actually looking in the direction of the constellation of Sagittarius. Okay, now how do you actually discern the galaxy's shape while you're in the disk of the galaxy itself? Well, one thing that we can do is we can map out the radio waves that are emitted by hydrogen gas. And that's specifically what this radio map refers to. The location of the sun on this map is here. In this direction is the constellation of Sagittarius. So in this direction, like so, is the center of the Milky Way. And then we can't see any of the energy that's being emitted on this side here of the diagram or on this side of the map, because basically all of this material is in the way. There's basically a shadow here. However, when we do map out the radio waves emitted by neutral hydrogen gas, we then end up with this map right here outlining the spiral structure of the Milky Way. Okay, here's an artist's rendition of the Milky Way and the sun's location within. So the Milky Way galaxy is an example of what is called a barred spiral galaxy. You have this bar of material here. This bar of material is made up of stars, dust, and gas. The dust and gas, by the way, is basically the same thing. It's mostly hydrogen and a little bit of helium. If that particular material is cold, it doesn't emit any light, and we refer to it as dust. If there are stars nearby, however, that heat up the material and ionize it, then that material gives off a little bit of light, and it's referred to as gas. Okay, and then tailing away from either end of the bar, here and here are two enormous spiral arms. And then there are several other spiral arms that are scattered within. 
Okay, the sun itself is located here, about two-thirds of the way out from the center of the galaxy. We're kind of like on the inside of one of the minor spiral arms called the Orion Arm. In this direction, like so, is looking in the direction of the constellation of Sagittarius. Okay, now the structural is spiral arms themselves within the disk in the galaxy. Why do spiral galaxies look the way they do? Well, the spiral arms are actually examples of what are referred to as density waves, and here's the basic idea as to how you can understand how they form. So take a look at the top portion of this slide here. You see elliptical orbits, for example, associated with individual stars or dust or gas about the galactic center. If all of those ellipses are aligned with each other, then you basically see something that looks more or less like a phonograph record. However, if the ellipses are tilted with respect to each other a little bit, say here and here, notice that then there are portions here in these simple drawings where the ellipses bunch together, and then where the ellipses bunch together, those then form the spiral arms themselves. Okay, these formations are referred to as density waves. These density waves represent compressions of stars, dust, and gas, supernovae that occur within the spiral arms within these density waves, cause the material to gravitationally collapse. This then causes star formation. Okay, now the physics of density waves is actually pretty similar to the physics of ordinary traffic patterns that everybody who has driven on the freeway, for example, in heavy traffic has experienced. So what you're actually seeing here in this graphic is what happens if you have a slow moving truck and then you have traffic, individual cars that then begin to move around that slow moving truck. Notice that as the truck moves along the highway from here to here, periodically you have stuck cars that have to slow down and move around the truck and then pass from the truck like so in this direction. So the individual cars are moving faster than the wave. Think of the wave as this compression that happens like so around this slow moving truck. So then an individual star, an individual car, for example, passes through that density wave and ends up over here like so, from this portion of the picture to this picture here. So the basic physics of compression waves describes both traffic patterns and spiral arms. You've all experienced this before as you pass through traffic, heavy traffic, say, on the freeway. Okay, so take the previous diagram and now apply it here to spiral arms. So we have the general rotation of the galaxy clockwise in this direction like so, and then individual bits of material, stars, dust, and gas, are then moving around the center of the galaxy in their individual orbits. They periodically bunch together to form the density wave, to form the spiral arms, but each individual piece of the wave is moving faster than the wave itself. So then therefore, if star formation is occurring within the wave as supernova explosions occur, causing the material to gravitationally collapse, then you end up with material here that has already passed through the wave, resulting in these young clusters of stars. Here in yellow are portions of the wave where, for example, the gas is being heated by star formation. And then here is portions of the wave that hasn't moved through the wave itself yet, this right here is material that has not yet undergone gravitational collapse to form stars. These are called, by the way, dark nebula or molecular clouds. So you have molecular clouds here. You then have nebulae that are forming stars here. And then you have already formed stars here. So this material has already passed through the wave. This material here is yet passed through the, through the wave. Okay, so with that previous drawing, right here is a very nice, beautiful example of a typical spiral galaxy. This is a face-on view of that galaxy in detail, and then you can see this basic structure occur. So right here is a nice spiral arm, for example. Right here are clusters of young stars that have already formed. The pink regions here are nebulae where star formation is taking place, and then the dark material are dark molecular clouds that haven't yet passed through the wave. Okay, moving on to the next slide. Okay, as I mentioned earlier, basically what triggers star formation are supernova explosions. Supernova explosions are cataclysmic explosions of extremely massive stars that end their lives very quickly. Basically, the energy associated with those explosions shoves around the material itself, the dark molecular clouds that you saw in the slide earlier. 
that then shows the material such that it undergoes gravitational collapse and then stars form. Okay, here's the basic layout of a typical spiral galaxy, such as the Milky Way. You determine the very you determine the layout of such a galaxy, say the Milky Way, by doing mapping of variable stars, proper motion measurements, and the radiation emitted by hydrogen gas. So for the Milky Way, right here is a face-on view. The total size of the Milky Way from one side of the disk to the other is about 100,000 light years. If you can then take the Milky Way galaxy and look at it edge on like so, you would then see this distribution here. Here's the disk in the Milky Way. Here's the central bulge. And then you have the globular clusters, more or less spherically distributed in a halo around the galactic center. Okay, here's a beautiful photograph of a face on spiral galaxy. This is M51. And then here's an edge on photograph of a beautiful spiral galaxy as well. Okay, that concludes this screencast here on the basic structure of the Milky Way. It's not necessary for me to do a part two.